the biggest story really in the news right now. Again, the massive crackdown on pro-Palestine anti-genocide demonstrators throughout the country on college campuses. We, we played the inspiring footage of faculty protecting students and joining them in walkouts, laying bare the reality that this is an administrative and university benefactor-led crackdown where they're bringing in the NYPD. And they're actually even to the right of the NYPD in the Columbia, in Columbia's instance, at, at UT Austin, the, there were cops on horses going after these students. I mean, the footage is, it's horrific. Juan Gonzalez, uh, democracy now, who I believe was active uh, in 68 yeah. said, actually, we were shutting down classrooms right. and things like that. This is to the right of 68. The, the, what we're doing for a genocide Israel's committing right now. And I think that that's becoming a little bit more clear to people where when the battle lines are drawn, because Mike Johnson showed up at Columbia University um, yesterday to give a speech chastising the protests and also calling for the resignation of the president who has given the right everything that they wanted. I mean, Robert Kraft, owner of the New England Patriots, withdrew his funding from Columbia. He's a huge supporter of Israel. They've done because Shai Davidai wasn't allowed to call students capos. I, apparently, but we know how this works and nothing would have ever been enough short of, you know, doing a little bit of a Kent State action on these kids. I mean, that's what else can we draw from what they actually the, what, what other conclusions can we draw about what they really want here? That's what this is headed for. Um, I mean, Josh Hawley and Tom Cotton have both said that they want the National Guard to be deployed to Columbia. That, again, is evoking the uh, Kent State killings by the National Guard. Someone needs to get the memo on that. And Mike Johnson um, has proposed cutting federal funding to schools, he said, uh, who were and also revoking student visas if you're involved in these protests. He said that on the Hugh Hewitt show. But here he was questioned by Aaron Burnett on CNN about his stance here. And I actually think she does a pretty decent job indicating that maybe some in the corporate mainstream media will come out now more on the right side of things now that the Christian Zionists, fundamentalists like Mike Johnson and the Republican Party are making clear their position. You know, thanks for your time. Obviously, there's a lot going on in Congress right now. Um, you've chosen to travel to New York, and uh, as you were just out on those steps calling for the resignation of the president of here of Columbia, um, there was heckling, there was shouting, that was not a warm reception. Enjoy your free speech. Were you surprised at all by what happened? Well, there was a sea of students who I, I apparently have been involved in the protests here, and I'm not surprised that they didn't welcome our visit because we're calling out their activities. What the, the point we tried to make today is that this is not who we are as Americans. This is not uh, an expression of the, the First Amendment. This is not an exchange of ideas. This is this is threats and intimidation of violence against Jewish students no. for who they are, for for their faith, and that's a terrible trend that's going on in the country right now. We have these similar types of activities and, and, and what are becoming violent protests. Sorry, no, that's not happening. This is a protest against the state of Israel. No one is saying Jew. Actually, in fact, um, as well, of course, I think you can see in this interview, it is uh, led in part by Jewish students. So, And they're actually overrepresented in the arrests. And you yeah. listen to the, their voices are actively being suppressed uh, because yeah. young Jewish students are demanding that this genocide not be committed in their name and that the universities that they pay tuition to divest from Israel and weapons manufacturers that may be going to killing Palestinians. And they are a massive threat to the Zionist project. So they'd rather have Christian theocrats who yep. uh, like Mike Johnson, who in any other context would be f happy to to What's uh, in the back of his mind to, would be happy to uh, to to repeat and you know the anti-semitic great replacement theory now suddenly cares about anti-semitism yeah biblical crazies as opposed to anti-zionist jews yep country right now we have these similar types of activities and and, and what are becoming violent protests on campuses around the country no. and members of congress i believe have an obligation a responsibility to speak about this and to um, and to demand that it come to an end because it's not good for us the main thing they were chanting was free palestine how is that anti-semitic 
Well, what's anti-Semitic is that Hamas endorsed this protest today. Within the last two hours, they issued an endorsement statement and heralded the students here and said, These, this is the next generation of leadership in America. Um, if you're getting endorsed by Hamas, that's not a good look. It's not a good sign. Some of these students apparently are unaware of the atrocities of October 7th, or they're denying it. They deny that women and children were brutally raped and murdered, that infants were placed into ovens and cooked Can alive. Can you pause it? Yeah. Uh, we deny that because that was made up. Yeah. The, specifically, the, there, there were probably instances of sexual violence on October 7th. Yeah. There hasn't been, honestly, very... Uh, sufficient reporting on that front because, because there is a genocide right after well and because israel also did not follow proper procedures with authorities to 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 investigate those claims they outsourced right. it to a fundamentalist group called zaka that has a history of lying and now we now know that there were incredibly unprecedentedly horrible reporting errors in the new york times's expose on that so we still don't have clear information there i wouldn't be shocked but the fact that the idea that it was uh, mass or coordinated systemic. Sex systemic sexual violence that doesn't there doesn't seem to be evidence of that for that and that babies in the oven thing was debunked on like like one week after october 7th yeah within the week brutally raped and murdered, that infants were placed into ovens and cooked alive. The things that happen there are unspeakable, and yet they're out there waving flags Liable. for the very people who committed those atrocities. This is, this is not who we are. Speaker, in those early days, um, you know, I was in some of the kibbutz, and you could smell the death and the bodies. Um, it was horrific. And yet what's happened since has been horrific, too. And th there's a student here, a PhD student at Columbia. I wanted to quote him. He is Jewish. He has written a testimonial about what's going on here right now, his experience on campus. And, and he says, I'll read it to you, the most pressing threats to our safety as Jewish students do not come from tents on campus. We should be focusing on the material reality of war, the munitions our government is sending to Israel, which kill Palestinians by the thousands, and the Americans participating in the violence. Do you think that protesting the humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza, protesting the tens of thousands of innocent people who have died there, is anti-Semitic in and of itself. I, I think there's always a place for debate in the free exchange of ideas, but let's not equivocate on what's happening in Hamas, with Hamas and in Gaza. This is a battle, as Netanyahu said, Prime Minister Netanyahu said, between good versus evil, light versus darkness, civilization versus barbarism. This isn't a close call. We have terrorists who preyed upon and attacked viciously and killed many innocent Israelis. And the idea that they would be out here in support of that, Hamas is using civilians as as uh, shields for themselves they put their their operations under hospitals and schools they, they are they're using civilians in a theater of war and so it's difficult why would someone blame Israel for trying to stamp out the very terrorist threats that are right there on the doorstep we should not be dictating to Israel their military strategy we should be supporting our ally which is the only stable democracy is in there the anything East. Israel could do that would be over the line for you because when when you talk about stamping it out I mean many innocent children have died and are dying at Israel's hands and the IDF. They have. There have been civilians murdered, but that is not the fault of Israel. It's the fault of the terrorists, the Hamas uh, operators and soldiers, what? the terrorists who have used these people and put them into harm's way. Israel, I'm convinced, is doing its very best to prevent civilian casualties. But uh -huh. this is a war, and they're fighting for their very existence, and they are not the aggressors. It is the other side. Some of the people here seem not to understand that, and I, I think that's a real problem. We can debate the merits of all these things, but what they're doing here is intimidating Jewish students. That's the thing that is so problematic. All right, so let me ask you about that, because when it comes to that, the NYPD, at least as of Monday, have said they've not received a single uh, call from Columbia University of reports of any physical harm. Well, no physical harm. Right, but you have to speak to these Jewish students who are in fear of their lives, who are cowering in their, their apartments feelings. right now, who are not coming to class. You just heard from In one. fact, the administration recognized the threat was so great, they canceled classes. Now they've come out with this hybrid idea. Well, if you're Jewish, maybe you do want to stay at home. Maybe it'd be better off for you. But it's so discriminatory. It's so wrong in every way. The responsibility of a university administrator is to keep peace on campus and ensure the safety of students. Job number one, if they're incapable of doing that, that you need different leadership. I, I think this is time for a really strong hand. I'm trying to understand. So, I mean, who's been attacked on campus? That's exactly right. We're, it's so uh, you've been invoking Orwell a lot, and I know a lot of people like to, but to hear 
everything just completely inverted the reality. Israel's not the aggressor here. We're protecting the safety of students on campus by sending cops against them, even though there have been no instances of violence that we're supposedly protecting them from. What are we protecting them from? Fact that we're protecting them from them having hurt feelings. It's so incredible that the right wing has for years cynically used free speech on campus in order to speak about the censorious pink haired left and uh, go crying and crying about demonstrations at outside of Milo Yiannopoulos's appearances or I don't know, uh, Charlie Kirk or whatever it is. And now, as soon as students come together and engage in well-established forms of protest that also have historical precedent, not just at Columbia, but throughout this country, whether it be for apartheid or the Vietnam War or what have you, when it's actually a demonstration of free speech as intended by the founders, free political speech and protest, that is when he says, well, we can have a debate, but we're going to shut down this particular action um, as it relates to free speech. And, and just to point out the obvious here, because as I said uh, at the beginning, it, it appears like I, I, I thought her line of questioning was good there. And we're going to see more of this as Republicans now engage with the Israel issue. For since October 7th, most Republicans have completely ignored the slaughter in Gaza. Um, now they are, because it's within the, uh, the, the conversation around campuses and young people being hysterical, they're going to weigh in and then their authoritarian impulses to crack down on young people will show themselves and it will continue to reveal themselves. And hopefully the media follows suit because these are the extremists here. When we talk about Zionism and the political movement behind it in this country, the Christian Zionist movement is too often left out. This is an old uh, poll. I mean, it's 11 years old from Pew, but I just the statistic stands out to me. Twice as many white evangelical Protestants as Jews say Israel was given to the Jewish people by God. 82% to 40%. That was 11 years ago. And I don't know how the numbers have shifted at that point. But I think it gives you an indication of what Christian Zionist ideals are and why the Republican Party is now about to link arms with someone like Netanyahu. I think, though, they see Biden doing even a tiny bit to help Palestinians as an opening for them to get the powerful and well-funded Israel lobby behind them full throatedly ahead of the presidential election. Um, so we should now that I think like we you see these such o obvious anti-Semites and racists speaking what they actually believe instead of ignoring Gaza. Hopefully there's more clarity. Yeah, I mean, who's been attacked? In January, pro-Palestine students were hospitalized because a student who's reportedly, and I'm not sure how this is borne out, but a member of the IDF, um, put it like fart spray so much to the point where people were suffocating. Um, I, I want to shout out the student who wrote that Zateo piece uh, mentioned here, uh, John Ben Menachem. Um, give him a follow. Um, uh, he's been really good on this lately. Um, but yeah, I, 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 it's this, and uh, who's been shot? Oh, pro-Palestine students in Burlington, mm -hmm. right? Like the attack, there's the, there's Zionists, whether they are Christian or Jewish, they're Zionists. Yeah, it's a little bit stressful right now because your ideology is being used to commit a genocide right now that everyone's watching. Um, that, you can't be protected from that, actually. That's, that's just how this is. So like to invoke the way this is seamlessly, and we'll see Robbie Soav did this too, that this is a attack on Jewish students. No, it is not. If you are a Zionist, whether you're a Christian Zionist, an atheist Zionist, a Jewish Zionist, now's a tough time because yes, that ideology is, again, committing a genocide. It's gonna be a stressful time. You shouldn't be attacked. Obviously, everyone's safety uh, it should be protected, but guess what? It's not people, it's not Zionists who I've seen being attacked. I've seen Palestinian, pro-Palestine students be shot. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're also doing the very dangerous work of conflating basically whiteness with, with, with uh, anti-whiteness with anti-Semitism. That's how they're operating. And right. you know what? Also, they're going to these protests, Zionists, and staging shit and saying, oh, I got poked in the, I got stabbed in the eye by a flag. Yeah. Well, we, we, like, we there's a reason that. you create a human chain so people like that can't be in your protest. Yeah. Robbie Soav. Right. Um, and, and they're, the, the, Gavin McGinnis of, of the uh, Proud Boys was there the other day. What? Right. 
But he get on campus. The ideological lines are being are becoming more and more clear to people. And if you are a liberal Zionist that still finds yourself agreeing a bit more with what Mike Johnson has to say, time to look in the mirror.